All right, welcome back everyone, I'm Nick. In this video, we're gonna take a break from learning new things. That's right, we're not gonna learn anything new, but instead, we're gonna use a lot of the things that we learned in the last couple of videos. And we're gonna take a look at presenting a screen in front of our current screen by popping up that new screen. So the purpose here is to get comfortable and start playing around with the different ways in SwiftUI that we can animate or segue or transition objects. So we're gonna use three different methods to pop up a new screen, and all three methods are gonna have pretty much the same result. We're gonna use sheets, we're gonna use transitions, and then we're gonna use just default animations. All three are really cool, and as you start to progress and get more comfortable with SwiftUI, you will learn and figure out which methods are best for your app and your situation. All three of these methods work and you can use them in real apps, but as the developer, you get to decide which way you think is best. So I would love to hear in the comments after this video, which of these three methods is your favorite. So we're back in Xcode and as always, let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It's going to be a Swift UI view and I'm gonna call this popover bootcamp. Once you're inside, click resume on the canvas so we're all connected. Now again, we're not gonna learn anything in this video, we're just going over some of the recent stuff that we learned, uh, because I wanna show you how dynamic SwiftUI is. So there are three things that we learned in previous videos, and if you have not watched my previous videos, I highly recommend going to check those out and then coming back to this one. But we did a video on sheets, we did a video on animations, and we did a video on transitions. So in this video, we are going to basically present a second screen and we're gonna use, we're gonna do it using all three of these methods, a sheet, an animation, and a transition. So the end result is going to look basically the same for all three, but I really wanna point out and how there are multiple ways to get the same result. And as a developer, you're gonna start figuring out which ways you prefer, which ways are better for your actual app. But let's get into it and let's start by creating this first screen here. We will add a Z stack. Let's add a background color. We'll do color.orange and we'll call edges ignoring safe area all. And in this Z stack, let's add a V stack. Let's add a button at the top. Let's just use the string protocol approach. We'll call, uh, call it button, press enter. And we'll add a spacer to push the button to the top of the screen. We can see the button here. I'll make it a little bigger. Let's call it .font .large title, just so you can see it. Here's our button. And now we're going to get into presenting a second screen. So first, let's create a second screen. So just like we have here, we're going to create another struct. Struct. Let's call this new screen of type view. Open the brackets. And every view needs a body as we know, and we'll open the brackets here. In this new screen, I'm going to add a Z stack. Let's open the brackets and let's add a color dot purple and edges ignoring safe area all. So it was just a purple screen and if we put in the preview, we just put, we commented out the popover bootcamp and we put in the new screen, we could see what it looks like and it should just look like a purple screen. Great. So let's go back to the popover bootcamp. I'll comment out the new screen here. And when we click this button, we want to present the new screen. So let's first do it using a sheet. Method one is going to be a sheet. So let's do at state var show new screen of type bool equals false. When we click the button, we want to show new screen dot toggle. And let's add a comment here, method one, and we'll, we'll title it uh, sheet. So we'll call it dot sheet. And we did this in the last video. We'll use the is presented. We will bind it to the show new screen. And the content we want to show when the sheet is presented is the new screen. And let's check it out. Let's click play on the live preview and we click the button and it works exactly as expected. We have a sheet pop up in front of our current view. So nothing crazy here, we just have a sheet pop up. Let's add a back button to the sheet real quickly. So let's call, so in our second screen, let's add a button. 
we we'll use the action and label. The label is going to be an image with a system name of Xmark. Let's make it foreground color of white and a font of large title. Let's again put the new screen into the preview just so we can see it quickly. And I'm moving faster here because we've done all of this in previous videos. Let's change the alignment of the Z stack to top leading so that it is in the top left. Let's add some padding around it so it pushes it out from the edge a little. And when we click this button, we want to dismiss the sheet. So we can do at environment key path backslash dot presentation mode var presentation mode. And in our button, we'll call presentation mode dot wrapped value dot dismiss. This is again nothing new. We did this in the last video. So let's put the popover bootcamp back in. Let's comment out the new screen. Let's hit resume on the canvas. And now we can click our button. We have our sheet pop up and we can press the X and it dismisses. This is working exactly as expected. Now a lot of beginner developers are going to use sheets very often in their app. And that's because it's a very straightforward approach and logically showing a new sheet is like going to a next screen. But we also learned that we can use transitions and animations to get a similar effect. And oftentimes in an app, it's actually better to use a transition or an animation than this full sheet. So let's check out a second method here. So I'm going to comment out this sheet and let's put a comment here, method two dash, and we'll do transition next. And here we're going to say, if show new screen, open the brackets, then we're going to add our new screen and we can call dot transition dot move from the bottom edge. And we will call an animation. So we can call dot animation dot maybe spring. And when we click the button, it's going to pop up from the bottom, kind of like a full screen cover. Now I want to, I want to make it look kind of like a sheet. So let's just add some padding. We'll do dot padding at the top. So we'll do dot top, maybe 100. Now we can get a very similar effect, but using a transition. And of course we can make it look better here by adding rounded corners. Um, but let's fix this screen now. So this X doesn't work because we're not in a sheet and it's trying to dismiss the sheet. So we can change this new screen. We can change this back button instead of calling the presentation mode. We could add a binding variable at binding var show new screen of type pool. And then when we click the button, we will show new screen dot toggle. So now when we add a new screen, it's going to ask us uh, to bind to the variable of show new screen. So that's again, this variable at the top here, and we've done binding in previous videos. So you should understand this. So now we just toggle this Boolean. And when this goes to false, this new screen is removed from the hierarchy. So click resume again, click the button. And when I click this, it now disappears. And I didn't really want to get into this much, but you did probably notice that we have a nice transition when it pops up and then when it removes, it pops off the hierarchy. It doesn't transition out. And then it has something to do with these Z indexes of the second screen versus the first screen. So a quick, easy way to fix that is just to add a Z stack open the brackets and then put this show new screen inside. And then on this Z stack, we'll just add a Z index of, we'll do 2.0. So this Z stack is always in front of this current V stack, no matter what. And now we can actually click the button and we get a nice transition up and a nice transition down. So again, this is just another way to present a second screen. And I want to show you guys a third way to also present a second screen. So let's comment out method two and let's go to method three animation offset. And here we're going to add our new screen with a, we have to bind to the show new screen again, because we added that variable in the, in the last method. We'll add padding dot top comma hundred, just like we had in the last method. 
And now we're just going to animate the offset. So we'll do dot offset and we'll just use the, the Y here. So as we know, because we've covered offset in previous videos, if we move the Y to like 300, it's gonna move down 300. If we move it up, negative 300, it'll move it up 300. And what we're gonna do is just move it down the full length of the screen. So right now at offset of zero, it pops up exactly where we want it to be. So when we toggle show new screen, we want the offset to be zero. So we'll do show new screen, question mark zero. Otherwise, we want to move it down and let's move it down the full height of the screen. So we'll just do UI screen dot main dot bounds dot height. So this will move it down the full height of the screen, basically moving it off the screen. And then let's just add our animation dot spring or whatever animation we want to this. And now when we click the button, we again get the exact same animation the exact same basically transition here, except this time we are animating the offset rather than a transition. So I just wanted to show you guys that there are multiple ways to get the same result in SwiftUI. We used a sheet, then we used a transition, and then we used and then we used the offset. All three ways presented us the second screen, and all three ways are viable ways to actually do this in an app. So as you get better, you're going to start to realize which method you prefer, which one is best for your app. Uh, I would say try to use the transitions whenever possible because they're definitely the most dynamic. They're probably a little more complicated to actually implement because you have to deal with some of the Z indexes. But as you start doing more complex things in your app, you'll realize that the transition is actually very, very dynamic because when we're using a transition or, or even the offset, we can then add more things on top of it because we're actually still within our main view. If we go to this sheet, then we're actually completely in the second screen. We're in a new environment. So there's sort of less things that we can do. And again, the sheet only has the default animation, whereas the transition and the offset, we can really customize with our own animations and our own transitions. All three methods work. All three are used all the time in apps, but I just wanted to really point out that you can start getting creative when you're making your Swift UI applications because there is more than one way to do the exact same thing and get these really cool results. So that's it for this video. We didn't learn anything new, but we are mastering what we've already learned. So I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video, if you want more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next video.